and let's get the avocado peels in it. Ta da! They are inside. Look at the color that it turned out to be. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> it feels so weird sitting here, but hi, my name is Lisa. I make crochet and knitting videos here on my channel. And welcome back to a new video. I'm gonna do something different today, and that is hand dyeing yarn for the first time. I've never done this before, and I'm gonna do it with something that I wanna say all of us have in the house, but maybe not everyone, but I'm gonna do it with avocados. So, I have been saving my avocado peels for the past couple of months, and I have a good amount in here. I froze them, so that's why they are in this bag, and why they are still a little bit wet and things like that. And I am so curious to see how the yarn will turn out. I will grab the yarn in a second. <laughs> of course, I have to get off here. But I watched several YouTube tutorials and I read some articles and things. And this is in no way going to be a tutorial since I am not experienced at all. But you'll just see me trying, hopefully not failing and yeah, it's just a little experiment, basically. So let's get the yarn and let's get started. Okay, so the yarn I am using, this is something that I got at my local yarn shop. It is from the Offstop in Amsterdam, for those Dutchies out there. It is Regia hand dye, for hand dye, four ply sock yarn. I will link it down below if I can still find it. Very basic. The only thing I do not have um, that was recommended in the tutorials was to have like zip ties and yeah I don't think I have them right now and I will take an extra look if I really can't find them but I don't think I have them. So what I have, my supplies are the yarn of course, I have the avocados, this is about, I will count I think it's about four avocado peels, like for all four avocados, and I've got a few pits in there as well. So it looks very weird to see them uh, frozen. I have, of course, a pot that I will use and some kitchen supplies, and I need a large bowl as well for rinsing the yarn and for putting the dye in eventually. So let me grab the largest bowl I can find. There it is. So, last one, <laughs> the bowl. And if I'm gonna be using anything else in the meantime, um, I will update you, of course. Okay, so I really couldn't find zip ties, but I could find some wire, so maybe I will try and make something with that. But <laughs> we'll see, basically. Let me look again at my phone, because I found this one article that I will link down below to see what the, like, process was again i think firstly i am going to it says like to clean your avocado pits and peels i've done that already because what i've done every time that i finish eating an avocado i just cleaned it i put it in the freezer so i don't need to clean them anymore and it's very important to have some pits in there as well because you don't need a mordant when you are dyeing yarn with avocados since the pits act as a natural mordant. So what I'm now gonna do is fill my pot. It says in the article to have like a good amount of water in it so you can soak all the yarn of course eventually. So that is what I am gonna do now. And this is all gonna be so improvised and I'm very sorry for the background noise as well. They just won't quit doing construction work and things but yeah let's not get bothered by that and let's start hand dyeing yarn. This should be okay. Okay, I filled the pot and I'm gonna, gonna put it on the stove right now. And let's get the avocado peels in it. Ta-da, they are inside. And now I think that the easiest thing to do is just turn on, turn on the stove. Let me see, it's difficult to do this while filming and not put it that high and this is now gonna heat up 
and I'm not gonna let it boil but just simmer a little bit and I will keep an eye on it so that's the next step I can remove the label from it and I think that this one is actually already a little bit tied together but I'm just gonna add some uh, wire to it to make sure it's easier to grab I guess it feels so weird to be using yarn in my kitchen since of course this is the one place where I don't really knit and things okay I've made this little handle to it as you can see, it's getting really hot already. It's almost boiling and the water is already starting to turn a bit, I don't know, brownish or something. So yeah, super curious. And the yarn in the bowl is just waiting for its turn. The water is now at the right temperature. So I'm really gonna lower the stove temperature a lot. And thankfully my stove has one of those timers. So I'm gonna put it on like I think about two hours or something like that it's looking really good so uh, in the meantime I'm just gonna wait and bring on magnets for my fridge since I use quite a lot of avocado peels I'm not really sure which time would be the best because I've seen people use only one or two avocado peels and that already gave us gave up a lot of color so yeah I'm curious to see um, how it'll do <laughs> so I am just gonna let this simmer for the past for the next um, hour or two hours or something like that and I'll see you back after that I am by the way still working on my camisole number five didn't make a lot of progress since it's on teeny tiny needles three milliliter and now i have to just do like ribbing for a long 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 time so it's gonna take a while for me to finish this but let's just knit while i'm waiting for my avocados to <laughs> cook <laughs> Okay, it has been simmering for the past two hours and I think the color is definitely dark enough. Look how much dye has come off the avocado peels. So now I'm just gonna take out the peels with um, like a spoon or something, like get them out. And then it's time to actually start with dyeing the yarn. Let's rinse the yarn. Why do I have dishes in here still? Okay, yarn is in here, rinsing. Not entirely sure why you should do that, but <laughs> they say to do it, so. And now I'm actually gonna put it uh, through here, the, the dye. I hope it will fit into this bowl. After it, I will put it, of course, back again into the pan. For now, I need to make sure. Oh, the color is so cool. Oh, yeah. I need to clean the pan a little bit as well. But it looks very exciting. I'll show you. Like, okay, see? This is what it looks like now. Very cool. Can't wait to put the yarn in here. <laughs> okay, let's rinse the pan. Put this back again on the stove and put this again back in the pan. Lower the heat a lot. And then it's time to actually 
yarn in this thing. Okay, let me get it out of here. Ooh. And let's put it in the pot. Wow, that looks amazing! Okay, and hopefully my little trick will work. I saw in a lot of tutorials that it is better to leave the yarn overnight, but since I use so many avocados and I don't mind it if the yarn would be a little bit lighter, I thought like, oh my god, this is gonna get it very tangled. Let's not get it in there. I thought that it would be good enough to just have it for two hours and I'm not entirely sure for how long I will leave it on the stove I'll put the lid back on to have it simmer a bit but I'll just do it until I like the color that the yarn is okay it is now a couple hours later actually quite a lot of hours later and I have let the yarn kind of cool off and Oh my god, I don't think you can see it from that far away, but it's looking pretty nice. The color is not that dark, but I kind of like it that this way. So I'm just gonna take it out of the pan <laughs> and rinse it out. So I'll give you a bit of a closer look so you can actually see it. And I have wet hands, so you can see it. Look, it's like this kind of pink brownish type of color and it is so pretty really nice so let's get it out of here i will try to not get it tangled as much as possible and this was super useful by the way because i could easily grab out the yarn without burning my hands so i will cut it off now so i can actually take out the yarn i shouldn't be using scissors for this but I guess it's fine. Dee -dee -dee. Let's take it out. Ooh. Okay, let's put it in the bowl, in the pink bowl. I think actually with this water, it still has quite some color in it, so. I could have left it in longer, but I'm just very impatient, so... Let's rinse it out! I'm using cold water for this. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of detergent. Just using a teeny tiny bit of laundry detergent with it. Or this is a um, wool wash, actually just also for the smell some people actually dm'd me while i was posting photos of me washing this of washing dyeing this that it looked like spaghetti and they are very <laughs> right it does look a bit like spaghetti or meat or something like that okay let's rinse it out Oh, maybe I should not have taken off that the thing already because now it's difficult to try and get it not twisted and tangled. Whoopsie. Okay. it's about as dry as it could get from hand up drying it and wow the color is extremely pretty i like it so much it's not like a very pink thing not like this bowl or anything it's more of like a peachy brownish rose color but i think it's very nice and so cool to think that before this morning this yarn was like white completely white and now it's this gorgeous color 
yeah, it was kind of stupid of me to take off wire already, but <gasps> this is the after, or not yet because it needs to dry, but look how gorgeous the color is. And I will put it on a rack to dry, on a drying rack, and we'll see tomorrow or the day after how it actually looks. But for now, I'm super pleased with it. I can't wait to make a pair of socks with it. Ignore the incredibly big mess in my room right now. But I installed this little drying rack thing and actually I'm gonna wring it out once more because there's still some water in the yard. Okay, it's about as dry as it gets for now and I have no clue how to put this to dry for the best way. I think like lying it flat for the most part is maybe the most effective. And then kind of like spreading it out a bit so it hopefully dries a bit faster but ta-da! It's a couple of days later, I came back from work, I immediately changed into my pajamas because who wants to wear tight pants when you're at home? But it is completely dry, the yarn, and it looks really nice. Like this was, I had an extra one of the white skeins and this is what it looks like now. Let me twist it into a hank if I can do that okay I don't really think I did it the right way but oh my god look how pretty this is really just so nice I'm in love and it was so fun this process so now you can really clearly see the difference between the two colors. It darkened quite a bit and I do think that you can make so many variations with how many avocado peels you add, how long, like you can switch it up a lot. But I found it very fun and I will definitely be hand dyeing yarn again, especially with very natural materials like avocados was very easy to use. I want to do it with onion peels, onion skins as well, maybe dandelions. Um, yeah, I want to try like stuff out, so I'm very curious. If you've ever hand dyed yarn before, let me know in the comments. And if you want to do it, let me know what kind of material you want to use for it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe because that really helps me a lot. I will see you again next week for those of you who want to see me again. And till the time, please stay safe. I love you all a lot. Do we?